actually starting with uh, the women. So Lilian, you can you can speak up. How was yesterday? How was the session? What have you found difficult? And uh, yes, anything you want. Lillian, I think you're on mute if you're speaking. I think she, she just wrote on the comment. Yes, okay. She's having an issue with her mic. She will be texting it. Okay, so Carol, why don't you go next? Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, I think I just put myself on the whole seat. Uh, but it's all right. Um, uh, my day yesterday was uh, good. It's amazing. Uh, so I have been uh, working on uh, cleaning my data and uh, performing some EDA uh, and I've been successful so far. Uh, I'm going to report for today. I'm going through my code and, uh, you know, like make some adjustments um, and finish up with the EDA and uh, uh, do uh, deal with today's uh, deliverables. So that's what, uh, yeah. You need to pick the next person who would want to go. Okay. Uh, so I'm seeing. Uh, uh, sorry, Elias. Elias. Sorry, bro. Yes, okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday, yes, yesterday I tried to connect my data, database with uh, the code, and I successfully done that. And uh, after that, I go through. I try to know some information about the data I have, like, and uh, try to uh, the start and uh, null the cells and try to clean the data. And uh, I, after that. I start on user overview analysis to try to get the top 10 free and stuff like that. And I'm working on the aggregate barrier user now. That's pretty much what I've done today too. Uh, so far. Today I'm planning to prepare the PPT that we're going to submit to end and other tasks. So we'll continue on the idea. Thanks. Okay, great. Lilian has typed her comments. She's saying uh, the past two days were a bit overwhelming and exciting. I have run through the Streamlit course code and yesterday I started working on the EDA analysis yeah. on the data and so far everything is going great. And I give my words that I'll be like Kalo on next session. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, you didn't speak the next person. So I'll just speak uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good I think morning. I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, we can um, hear you. Yeah. Uh, so yesterday was um, um, was quite interesting, honestly. Um, and uh, I config based the GitHub repo and other the code structures on how I, I would write the project this whole week. And beside that, yes, I have uh, successfully implemented the database connections. And today the plan is actually to do the EDA performance, then the, create the, or do the PowerPoint for the deliverable for today's session, for today's assignments. Um, beside that, um, if I have any issues, 
so far so good um, but uh, we can't count on that might be some bug will pop up later today so who knows um, but yeah that's overall uh, my performance for yesterday um. okay great uh, can you help us pick the next person uh, I joined a bit late for the meeting, so I don't know which one might be. Um, I will go with basics, so Abel, um, alphabetically. And Abel Bekele, or I don't know if I'm spelling wrong. You're right, you're correct. Abel? Okay, he's saying he can't talk. Okay, so then we can go to Abdul Hamid Musa. Can you speak? Hi guys, how are you doing? So yesterday I went ahead and connected my uh, project with the database and I'm also working on uh, extracting valuable information from the data. Uh, so I'm working on the ID. Um, that's it, thank you. Okay, then I'll just pick randomly. Uh, Ikram, okay, Alexander is raising his hand. So, okay, Alexander, you can go. And then Ikram will follow. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Uh, we can't hear you. Uh, can you speak louder? Good morning. Your, your, your voice is a bit far, but okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Yesterday, I successfully attend uh, both the morning and the afternoon session and uh, community standards. I have understand uh, what I can do in the ADA process and how to integrate uh, our database with uh, Python. So when you come to me uh, yesterday, I have connected my process database with my base for the data for ID, and I dig into uh, some data sets. Uh, now today, I almost uh, completed the first uh, grocery tasks and started to prepare the PowerPoint that we submit today. So I am in a good status uh, to submit my project in today. Uh, thank you. We couldn't really hear you. Your voice was a bit far. Try to fix it for the next stand up. And next, Ikram, Ikram Kadir. If you're speaking, you're on mute, Ikram. Okay, you can type it. Okay, she's typing. Uh, she's saying she was able to finish task two and I just merged the branch before an hour and today I'm planning to continue with task three and deliverables. Okay, great. Uh, we encourage you to speak. Uh, I mean, you can also type in, but it's better if you speak. That's how we can also improve our confidence and uh, yeah, so I think Lamiga Roma is going next. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Good morning. Uh, the day before yesterday, just starting from Monday, I was working on just trying to connect my Postgres database and uh, again restoring my telecom database. I found a blocker just while trying to connect the commands were not working for me. I have tried many times. Even finally, I found the issue I wrote on this slide. Just simply, the reason was uh, my data on partition D and 
while I calling or while I'm running the command, unable to load. Finally, I brought it to desktop and it worked for me. And then now, starting from yesterday, I have started already EDA. I'm performing EDA part. And uh, just good progress, I think. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so next we will have Waldu Berhe. Good morning, everyone. Hello, I'm audible. Yes, we can. We can hear you. Yeah, yesterday was a good day. Uh, I was. Uh, I have some issues with importing the Telecom SPL, but I have fixed it finally. Then I have started to clean uh, my data. So I'm working on missing values and some EDA functions. Then I'm today. Today I'm ready to uh, do the uh, tasks which are uh, going to be submitted. Then I'm in a good mood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, do make sure to ask on our Slack channel whenever you have questions or challenges you need help with. And people who are willing to be asked, uh, you can uh, show us a thumbs up so that people will know who to reach out to. So yes, we will go on uh, to the next person. Uh, it's okay. Uh, hello, can you, he can you hear me? Yes, we can clearly hear you. Okay, so yesterday I uh, I was working on task two. I was able to perform some EDA, and uh, uh, I performed some EDA on the top handsets manufacturers and uh, the the task that was uh, under task two. And I do have some blockers, which is when I try to load the data, I uh, I. I try to load the whole data to, to a, da a data frame. And then uh, when I did that, it was taking up too much memory and uh, my uh, VS code kept on crashing. And I even had to restart my computer a couple of times. So I don't know what to do now. Uh, just, just to continue with the task, I am, uh, I'm only fetching like the first uh, 1,000 rows of the data. I would like to work with the whole data. so. If anyone uh, could please help, if anyone had the same problem and solved it in any way, I would really appreciate it. Uh, today, I'm planning on uh, going forward with the deliverables and uh, and uh, possibly, hopefully, go to progress to task three. So uh, that's it. Uh, I would really like uh, you to comment back, maybe on private uh, messages on Slack or in the comments about my blockers if you can help. Thank you. Okay, great. Anyone who has a solution for a UL's question, you can just raise maybe maybe just let me ask you UL. So okay. is that a memory issue or is that you know what what have you figured out what is the case? Is that that your computer doesn't have enough memory or is it just something else? Yes, uh, it's a it's a memory issue. Uh, so what I did was uh, I tried to load the data in batches and still it would take a lot of time and then uh, the, the my VS code would crash. So now just to go further with the task, I just uh, loaded the yeah. first so, thousand yeah. rows. But I mean, I think the data is very small, so I don't believe that really? you really? Go, okay. Yeah, it's okay. not really, um, you know, it's in total, it's not that many. So. And it should fit in your in your laptop. The only thing okay. that I'm suspecting that it might be is so first when you are running, check your task uh, manager. Like you know, it's like okay. if, I don't know in which in um, where in Windows or Linux you have exactly yes. just, and then check how memory is uh, growing, and okay. if it is actually. But I don't believe that it is the um, the part. But there are, of course, in an actual fact, if, if it was the huge data, you can still manage it using what is called lazy computation. You don't actually, you know, you read line by line or you read in batches and then you kind of uh, extract. But I think right now that would be a bit of overkill because the data is small. So I would say really? something, it must be something got to do with uncollected stuff. I mean, Python doesn't usually have that, but 
I, I think it, it should be, it should not be, I mean, someone definitely from here, you can, you can have a call with them. And sometimes they see the error much better than you because, you know, sometimes the person who's writing it might not see the obvious error. So, okay. yeah, with whoever so, is winning, just basically you can, would, they can be. Would you suggest, better. would you suggest uh, to, to uh, convert the whole thing into a CSV file and then no, try, no. try to make a data no, frame? That's, from a whole, that that's a whole point. Like, no, I think just query it. Okay. Like, I think, you know, sometimes it's so for normally that data is in a database right so yes and it's it, you know figuring it out is the the task so if okay. you are working for me for example and i have that data you know i don't want you to have just only one time solution so even okay, if yeah. it might you might not be able to finish you know you might not be able to progress dealing with it finding a way to deal with it in just quick amount of time is is a process and of course you know uh yeah, so that I would recommend almost always, just unless it's really, you know, you have no idea or you tried everything and it doesn't work, and that's as a shortcut you take it, you know, access it because in a normal environment, definitely yeah, that data would be really, really lo a lot large. But the, currently, right. the, the data we gave you is not that much. So okay. it should be okay. fine. Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll try to fix it, and I, I, I'm sure my peers will also help me on Slack. Exactly. Okay. okay awesome. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, great. Uh, so next we have Rodolf. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're fine. So far, so good. Uh, yesterday, I managed to to connect to create a database and be able to uh, restore the, the database. And I started working on the the data by cleaning it by removing the uh, missing value and i started working on the eg this morning so uh, what i plan to to do today is to be able to finish with the ega and go for next task is possible uh, by the way i have a question uh, this question is regarding to uh, the the report on which we are working so far we we downloaded a stream a stream a report for for go through and understand how python source code are are structured um now as we are working on our tasks i working on my tasks on local shall uh, my question is shall i create a a specific a report for that and at the end did i will share that link with you or how uh, it should go thank um, you rudolph like so so the other one so these are two different uh, projects right or tasks so the the one that we want that you work on is just on specifically on the you know the telecom data and this is very that's what you need to submit the other one that you clone is to understand and to go through the code and to learn about the code, but not to submit anything from that other than just your analysis of the code, right? So the GitHub link that you will submit uh, tonight and also that you will be working on is a new GitHub link that you created in your space, right? In your uh, username and a new, oh, new okay. one. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you, Abdullah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Next, we have Yaya. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so yesterday, I was a bit frustrated in the morning uh, because I couldn't uh, able to load the data, but with the help of you guys, I was able to uh restore the data and read it on uh jupyter notebook and then after that i have done the uh, eda uh, yeah uh, i haven't started today's task yet uh, the idea on users overview is almost done 
but I did it on a Jupyter notebook. Uh, so today is gonna be modularize those notebooks and perform the next analysis. Uh, I think that's what I have. Thank you. Okay, great. And next we have Daniel, Daniel Gus. Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing good. So yesterday was a great day. Uh, I was working on the uh, on the telecom project. I was able to restore the data to the Postgres scale uh, using the terminal code, and also I was working on the database connection using SQL Alchemy, and I start working on the ADA tasks. And my today plan is to complete the task two and task three. And the best part of the yesterday was uh, uh, the career tutorial. So I, I was a bit of a change in my mentality. I was thinking about the how to improve my profiles, like LinkedIn profile and the Indeed profile. So. I keep saying to myself that uh, this training will, will be intensive, so I should more focus on the academic part or the code part. But uh, after the yesterday's uh, tutorial, I start to think I can do both uh, uh, parts, like I have to improve the, uh, how to, you know, how to improve my profile and also how to uh, find jobs on the uh, remote uh, platforms. Uh, so it was a bit interesting. So today I expect a lot. I have to complete uh, task two and task three. Uh, that's my feeling. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you, Daniel. We would also want to have more people participating in the career session. We're seeing low numbers on those tutorials. So yes make sure to join on careers tutorial on the non-technical tutorials as well so next we have iman ibrahim good morning everyone can you hear me yes we can hear you good morning good morning i'm happy today because i joined the stand up i didn't attend previous because i have internet connection errors sorry about that uh, yesterday i uh, work uh, i wrote the report of the source code streamlet i finished for it and uh, i uh, load the data post press sql and connect to the notebook i will work about uh, task two and task three i hope i finish it to, today to submit as a night i face some uh, problem uh, when i connect the uh, notebook uh, to post this sql but i fixed now thank you Okay, thank you, Iman. Whenever you uh, have any problem or uh, blockers or anything, please make sure to reach out to uh, on the Slack channel so that people will provide answers. So we have Fanwell next. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so yesterday I loaded the first press data. And uh, I applied that to the data frame and tried to do some piece programs to check out the data distribution. Uh, but uh, since there are a lot of columns, uh, that was a little bit difficult to analyze the data. But I'm still going through that. So my plan for today is to go through task two and task three and uh, bring out some video analysis. But since Yababi is here, can I ask you a question? Absolutely, you can. Uh, so when I was going through the documentation, we said uh, to dockerize the project. 
So is that a must or is it uh, something like we can no, do? It's, again, time? again, it's priority. It's probably low priority per se, but it's of course, you know, how much you can do it. You know, if it, you know, if you were to provide this one to a next, you know, to an next person, how hard they could work. So it's not like, you know, dockerization is very small task. Um, in part, you could just do it like, you know, you could copy from, you know, like, like it's not that, that difficult, but if you decide because it's, it will take you some time, I would say prioritize the work. It's all about prioritizing. Even now, someone is saying, okay, you know, they don't, they can't, they are unable to connect with the database. They did, they convert to CSV and they're working on it. That's fine. You know, that's, that's called strategy. You are working on, in any way, the data is there. So you're working on the data, but some parts like that, that are required. Usually if you, if you, you know, you are basically saying like, I'm, I'm going to be making the, the prioritization changing from now working in the database to CSV. But if you're just ignoring it, that's not good because then you're not delivering what is task bad because you know the time is small and you are prioritizing something so that you at least do something that is, you know, uh, what what is needed while at the same time trying the other one. And if it succeeds, succeed. If it's not, you report on it. I mean, that's also fine, right? But it's almost always think of it as prioritization in anywhere anyone tells you like even if you have at the end of the day for example you didn't succeed anything and you have something then you have to report that just saying like okay you know i have got so far this much and i didn't do this much but try to whatever you carry in your capacity to try to put them for example in git you know you have to commit some things even if it's not working it's not only the working part but that way, you will be able to at least summarize the state of the, 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 the point. And then whenever you have now energy, because sometimes errors really draws out your energy. And so now you work on something to be successful and you work something. And then later, when you have energy, you can return back to it. Or you can ask, in the meantime, you don't work on it, but someone else, you ask it on, uh, on the Slack channel and people. So it's a really a, about prioritization. So Docker is one part of that if you are you know not familiar and you, it's just you don't understand it you want to read it but later because now you are pressed in time you know you're prioritizing it later as part of a task and in your report say like you know i'm i'm going to be working later you know um maybe tomorrow or something on 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 the docker part so it's about prioritization does that make sense yeah i understand so it's like the concepts like that i don't understand yet but i will do later like is, yeah. you know the CI/CD thing in Python, so is it okay if I do it later on? Yeah, but it's I think most people they're like one thing you have to know is that right now I would recommend a lot everybody basically to not just do what is easy for you, you know, because that's the easy way, you know. And we, you might not if you don't understand it. Actually, it's better to ask it. Why do we? Why? Why are we doing this? You know, why are we doing CICD? Because you might think that's just overkill or you might think that's just really not interesting, but it's important to ask it and to get an idea because sometimes you do everything and then maybe that you, you didn't deploy it or you, you didn't prepare to deploy it. And then the time has passed be, and uh, like the investor, for example, in this case is unable to see it. You know, those things usually happen in real life. So, and some of them are cumulative. In a sense, for example, EDA, you do over and over as well. CICD, you do again and again and again. If you don't do it now, you are basically postponing it for later. So trying to at least learn a big part of it, even if it's not like the best part of the work that you're doing, but you learn something, you implement something that just is small, simple, and working. And then later in the next challenge, you would improve it. That's, that's the, the strategy. So, but I know that not everyone is starting equal. Not everyone gets successful. Sometimes your computer setting is a bit complex and all that. So for that reason, I would say prioritize and try to, you know, to try to do as much of, as much of the task as possible. Okay. Okay. Next we have Berhan.
if you're speaking, you're on mute, but on. Oh, hello, everyone. Hello. Um, hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so let's start from yesterday. Yesterday was great. Um, like I was working all night on task two, and it was good, but I haven't actually formatted in a, in a good way. So like I've been working on that, I have many questions actually. So the first thing is like, well, I try to write a separate function, uh, like, like, like we did in the week zero, like for utilities or let's say for cleaning data, I, I wrote some separate functions in some class. And then I, I'm, I'll, I'll be calling those classes in, in Jupyter uh, notebook files. And then I, my, the problem was like, uh, I just, when I call them at first, it's working fine, it's working good. And then on the next time when I get to update those functions from the class, let's say, um, let's say I have a function which is going to convert the data type into, let's say, if it is a string or if it is a float from the object. When I convert the uh, .sql file into a data frame, it's going to be like all of them is going to have an object data type. So I have to change that, that, that data type because when I try to see the missing values in that data frame, it's not going to give me the right missing values. So I have to change them into the right data type. So I wrote a separate function, which is going to convert it into a plot. So uh, I, I get too much of a detail. Let's say I have such a function. Let's say I have such a function. And then when I update the function, it's not going to call the updated function. And then it's again and again calling the old function, not getting the new one. So what should I do? I try to restart the kernel, and then I, I, don't, know, I don't know what's the problem. I first such a thing, and I, mean, I wish I was Brad, uh, is that... Do you mean on the base code? Is that just you are not, is not picking up or is it like? Yeah, it's not calling the latest updated function. It's again calling the old one, which is the, the so, first so, function that I have. Okay, so it's not, it's nothing got to do with the the code, right? So it's got to do with paths in this case. So that means uh, think, it's not no. picking up. So that means mm -hmm. if you restart, definitely, I mean, are, are you working on Jupyter Notebook or what is your environment? Yes. Uh, Jupyter, I created a separate environment for it, actually. Yeah. So uh, let, usually, you know, this is, um, again, this is for everyone. You know, these things just, there is nothing like, the world will not change for you only, right? So, and that's called common sense. So the common sense, you should really have that common sense, which says something is wrong. So, you know, it's either... Um, X or Y or Z, but something is wrong. The computer is just doing what it's doing and it's predictable. So probably there is just tiny detail that you overlook, right? And that's very normal. So I would say in that occasion, just get one person in a call and just see, tell them like, okay, I'm doing this. Just can you, can you check, see if there's any obvious mistake? And usually you will be surprised it's just, a tiny detail and almost always the community will will be useful in that so it's either you sometimes if it's not in the code because the code is not the issue it's in this case if you are have restarted and it's picking up then that means the old code is somewhere and you think it's loading from some place but maybe the environment you can print for example the system pass um the order of where it picks up so normally when you append a pass it's appending it on the end. But, and then maybe the former one is actually appended earlier to that. So things like very small, nothing got to do with big stuff. You know, by common sense, you can isolate the problem where it could be. And I, it's most likely the old code is somewhere and it's picking it up. Nothing, nothing strange there. So I would say just call one person and just get it or if there is anyone around you just ask them like you know just you know help me see it okay um I, i'll try to do that okay so I, I have another question also um yesterday when um, i don't know who the, the person exactly but uh, she was saying like we, we have to connect with the database load the, the data into the database and then when we try to do the eda or all the other tasks we have to use those uh the data from the database actually uh, am i right yeah so when we do the EDR or the cleaning we have to fetch from the database and work on that yeah so if, if that's the case so 
tomorrow we'll be doing on the dashboard and things like that. Last in the week, Piro have faced the challenge because, uh, like, if we're doing the swim with that dashboard using the local database, when we deploy it, it's yeah. not connected to that local data. That that is fine. So in that case, so, if you are if you are deploying it, it mm, yeah, you can deploy just only the the data. You can extract the data what is needed mm. for that database and put it together with with the streamlit code. How can I do that? Can I ask for? I mean, for example, once once you load the data, once you load the data, you can save it in a cache, right? So you can basically yes. just because the dashboard doesn't doesn't change. Yeah. You're not. It's not a live dashboard. I mean, in a sense, by live, you're not changing the data once you deploy the once you deploy the the dashboard. So you can just for exactly that dashboard that you require. That the data that you require, you can just put it in CSV and deploy it together. So okay, so when I yeah. when I do the stream lit, I'm gonna fish from the database, convert it into CSV file, and save yeah. that CSV file. Exactly. So so one way that in that kind of environment, how I would do is that I would check where I am. Like if I am in my local machine, so I will have an if condition. Then it will call the database or in a try accept way. So the first try is I'm going to connect with the database, but the accept part is just loading from a cache. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. But yeah, so the notebook, you can restart and it should work. If it doesn't work, it's probably a pause issue. Um, and I think if that doesn't solve, I think ask someone around you or just call anybody here. Um, you know, and and they, I'm sure it's an obvious small mistake. Okay. Okay, great. We will finish up with Abdul Rahman, and then we'll continue with announcements. Abdul Rahman, you can speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yesterday, I took some time uh, reading the documentation because uh, I, I was weak in this uh, part in week zero. So I focused on it. Uh, I also tried to learn about Postgre SQL and install setups of Postgre SQL. Uh, and this morning, tried to connect to database. Uh, my plan for today is uh, to do the EDA. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abdul Rahman. Uh, we're almost out of time. So for today, we will have our first tutorial in the afternoon from 12 to 1 p.m. UTC. And we will also have our first submission for the week. So yes, I think that's all for today. Uh, if you have but, any questions. But yes, so may maybe just let me take another 10 minutes to okay. answer some questions. Um, I mean, no, I mean, I joined in as well to see the mood. I absolutely loved it. I think people are very proactive. I'm sure everybody is uh, not only the people who raised, but tomorrow we'll see new hands. And I think the engagement is really cool. And um, the, the problems we're addressing are also nice. I think, you know, there's no Every problem is an opportunity for everyone to learn because if you don't face it today, you might face it next one. So I think this is really great. I am I am very happy. But is there any other, you know, just in 10 minutes, any high level on the comment, on a challenge, or anything that you you want to raise, like one or two people, um, that I could answer or I could help? It can be metaphysical, you know, as well as very pressed issue about anything on the challenge, or if something, as I said earlier, if something was not clear, like why you do some certain things. Um, if you have any question on that, I can answer one or two questions. Okay, uh, can I go? Yeah, you can. Okay, so uh, from task three, uh, we are asked to, you know, aggregate the metrics as per the cu customer already and take, get the top 10 customers. Yeah. So uh, I am uh, having uh, some uh, thoughts, but 
uh, one thing I'm trying to understand is uh, do, do we choose a, a matrix or are the matrix, you know, the way we, uh, the data you usage or other usage that are specific uh, on spend, uh, tasks? Yeah. So I think this is, this is, for example, one case. What is provided, just, you know, the top 10 by handset or the top 10 by data usage, these are good, right? So they, are, they fulfill the condition, like the task. But I think where we, what I want to see also people do is thinking, of relating it to the business question. Why am I showing top 10? And what am I, why am I, you know, what's relevant for that? And if I am, because the business question always must be inside, inside you, right? The business question is the investor trying to predict if, if it is worth investing on this company and investing means, you know, if someone invests, they want to get money out of it, or that means they want to see growth opportunities. And what are the opportunities that that are there? So in top 10 that you might comment and try to see like, is that data usage? Definitely. Right. Call numbers. Definitely. But also it's like, are people changing, you know, handsets, right? Are So I'm just more, so you can really think of about what adds value to that question, to the business question you are trying to answer. Because from every process, including cleaning, including whatever, you learn something about the business, you know, trying to address the business problem. In this case, you know, whether the company is doing well, whether the company has diversity, you know, whether the company um, is reaching, have, you know, giving good experience to people, whether you know, the, what kind of customers are there? For example, if you check, I mean, of course you might not have time sometimes, but if you have extracted some data about handsets, you know, from the unique handsets, you can actually estimate the price of the handsets. And then you might actually estimate the wells of the people that are on, you know, the highly usage. So you could, in principle, if you had time, you could do a lot more, including, you know, if I, you know, so those things that I was saying is like, you know, what are, what browsers, if there are, or what. So there are a lot one can do, but in this case, within just a limited scope and time that you have, almost always related, try to relate or first do the parts that adds value. Does that make sense, Gerard? No, it does, it does. So that, that was my explanation, thank you. Okay, cool. Anyone? Mikias? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, what you mentioned is what uh, I'm struggling with, like uh, relating the questions with the business uh, idea. So on specifically on task two, maybe I feel like I'm going in the wrong way, something like that. So uh, the task two asks us, the, your employer wants to have an overview of user behavior on this application. And it, the first one asks us to aggregate per user the following information. Uh, and the first one is number of XDR sessions. So the way I approached it was, I grabbed all the, I grouped by the customer ID. Then I tried to count all the XDR sessions, but the data I, I got, it doesn't seem that much useful from the business perspective. So I'm wondering if- But, but, but why, why is it not useful? Just maybe, can it? Uh, I feel like, uh, I'm not sure if it's not useful, but I feel like I could have done more or I, uh, there are other ways uh, I could have implemented. I feel like I misunderstood the task yeah. in the first place. So, no, no, I think that, that, that exactly what you do is correct, right? It's basically okay. grouped by a lot more operations and okay. it's accounts. But of course, later, in mm -hmm. terms of engagement, you can actually count the time difference you know, between mm -hmm. the sessions. So right now, the first one is much more, you know, volume. It's usually okay. simple. You start from volume, then you go into like actually, you know, variations. For example, if you want to do even more, you can actually start modeling, not only just now, you can, for mm -hmm. example, what are calls, you know, what are the distribution of calls across users? Mm -hmm. And, okay. you know, that's like a fingerprint analysis mm -hmm. where you say, you know, normally, that is distributed in gamma distribution, like because some, you know, like or poison. So all of this are kind of becomes starting becoming as you work on it, you would be really trying to say to start understanding even why statistics is useful because 
mm-hmm. in part like between two calls like if you were to model like if i ask you like you know a user alias now and if i give you their xdr session or cdr session how is it distributed is it in time so as a function of time and that time is delta t for example between the calls of the person you have delta t and as a function of delta t because some messages have longer delta t and some messages have smaller delta t so you can plot it in x axis for example delta t and then the others is the count the frequency the distribution of for example you know with delta t of like one hour how many calls are there or how many cdr sessions are there so that tells you a distribution and what is that distribution because if you know that distribution you can sample it later for your prediction time analysis actually every time analysis time prediction is usually using those distributions saying what is the most likely value it happens in one second now that Elias calls what is mm-hmm. the most likely that he would call in, in this is called a distribution and that distribution is normally when it's delta t it is uh, it becomes you know first is bernoulli that means mm-hmm. you're just basically binomial distribution and then after binomial distribution you have like when you are actually looking at delta t that you have like gamma distribution and then this is why people have worked you know have lots of distributions they are all connected so then you can be more complex like that right but in in our case for now you know let's just start simple volume after volume some kind of variance and variance only makes sense of course when you have um usually like the uh, gaussian distributions and everything tends to be gaussian distribution if the number of for example the samples are large so that's called the central limit theorem so you, you know over time you will understand this but for now i think that's that's fine and whatever you can do it's fine like you know uh, whatever complex you can add great do it but mm-hmm. it's a process okay thank you okay so maybe if there's one more I would add, otherwise we will stop because you need to take break as well before the next session, if there's a next session. We'll be having the next session on uh, in the afternoon okay. from 12 to 1 p.m. Yeah, so that means I can take if there's another question. As I said, anything that is, that's bothering you, that is whatever, you know, the, the whole point is sometimes you don't have time to connect with the bigger picture sometimes because you are doing you know, there's task by task, and that's fine. And sometimes I allow just so that we can talk also it's like, okay, why do we do this? I mean, Slack is there to actually do that. But, you know, feel free. I think the design is, it works for most people. You know, it's repetition will help you more, more than just understanding when, you know, when you do it one time, instead of trying to understand everything from that part, hope you know know that there's going to be all of the things that you do will come again and again and you will have a lots of chance to see it in variety of ways and that from that you understand actually you infer a much better understanding now it, you might not understand some things and it should be it's fine of course ask that questions in your head you should learn how to ask them anyway either slack or in stand up or or anywhere you have the chance in the tutorials but it's okay you know just that dealing with yourself is part of you know um, prioritizing and, and doing the task is part of the process and it it's really a useful um habit or a useful um discipline okay then i i think that everyone is doing well i hope um so we can stop here and thank you okay thank you so much Have a good day, everyone.